Hello friends, welcome back to another video from Somos Biology. In this video lecture, we are going to discuss about signal transduction pathway. What is signal transduction pathway? What do we mean by signal transduction pathway? That's what you need to understand. That's what we all eager to understand. Because I've seen students confused between signal transduction pathway and cell signaling. They almost utilize this term synonymously. But actually, there is a fundamental difference between an overall cell signaling cascade and a signal transduction pathway. So which part of the cell signaling is actually turned as a cell signal transduction pathway? So let's talk about it. The signal transduction pathway is a process of how after receiving the signal by the cell, convey that message from the second messenger to the effector proteins and finally to the transcription factors that give a rise to the proteins inside the cell. That whole process is known as signal transduction pathway. It's not about the cell signaling molecule and the receptor. That part is a part of overall cell signaling. We have understood that in the last lecture. If you haven't seen that lecture yet, then please watch that lecture because with the help of this lecture, you will understand cell signaling like basic water. Okay. So in this mode, we are going to talk about signal transduction pathway now. And in this case, what I'm going to share is this idea of signal transduction pathway. Remember, signal transduction pathway starts. So basically, in my mind, whenever I see this term signal transduction pathway, I put this thing in my mind that let's say this is the cell. I have this cell and here I have uh, the receptor. Cell signaling molecules binds to the receptor. And after the signaling molecule binds to the receptor, then there are sudden factors activated inside of the cell. They are known as intracellular proteins or intracellular proteins which gets activated. They are also known as second messengers. <clears throat> so what is the first messenger? This is the first messenger, the signaling molecule itself act as a first messenger. Second messenger start working intracellularly inside of the cell. The second messenger's job is to activate array of proteins how they activate it based on simply transferring phosphate group or transferring phosphate group from atp to a designated protein okay so such different proteins will be activated and this activation is known as signal transduction this particular part is known as signal transduction because when i say this term signal transduction there are multiple events going on inside of the cell okay but among those events, one of this event is signal relay. Relay means what? I have the signal. I'll pass the signal to the next. The next one will pass the signal to the next. That is relaying of the signal. That is done in signal transduction. So one of the job is the signal relay. Second job is signal amplification. So not only we pass the signal, but also our job is to amplify that signal. So if I say, hi in this speech, in this tone, the next one will say hi, the third one hi, fourth one hi, like this we are amplifying. So basically in this case we are amplifying the so amplification. Amplification is the second important point to consider. So a signal transduction has a relaying feature, relay of the signal, then amplification of the signal at the same time they are doing this. And they are doing this process by activating series of proteins. We call it protein cascade. Series of proteins. For example, in a MAP kinase pathway, uh, there is RAS protein. RAS protein is an effector inside of the cell. It will, it will activate RAF. RAF activate make. Make activates ARC. RAS, RAF, make ARC. It's a sequential event of activating the next protein, activating the next protein. So basically, we are playing a football match and we have ball in our uh, legs. So we are passing the ball, not only passing the ball, but we are also making the ball size bigger and bigger as we are progressing towards the goal. That's the idea. So this is how it works. And then finally, the effect, finally what happens? Finally, transcription factors will be produced. Sorry, TF, transcription factors. Once transcription factors are produced, which are also essentially proteins, will move inside the nucleus because nucleus is another component, another organelle inside of the cell. 
because the cell signaling originated outside of the cell then it move inside of the cell in the cytosol and then from cytosol it moves inside the nucleus and the process take place inside the nucleus after the transcription factors are made transcription factors will go inside of the nucleus and what they do is initiating the transcription of specific target genes into mrnas so once the target mrna are produced those mrna will be transported to the cytosol again and they will make further proteins this response proteins are required for multiple purpose for example upon receiving a growth factor hormone the cell will produce cyclines cdks which are necessary for the cell to divide got it this is kind of response that you are going to see so signal transduction pathway work like this manner only okay now if you want to understand the stages you know uh, here i'll be moving to the next slide now so this is a picture when i show this picture to the students they always get crazy about it because there is so much data so much information placed here but in reality when you will complete this whole series you will be able to understand each and every single pathway of it without any glitch there are multiple pathways with multiple proteins linked here and they are cross talking with each other those things are drawn that's why it seemed complicated it's not that complicated once you understand the fundamental of cell signaling here you can see there are multiple types of receptors found on the surface of a cell there can be survival factors there can be uh, you know gpcr g protein coupled receptors there are receptor tyrosine kinases there are integrins as receptors all these different kinds of receptors are found there are other proteins like wnt hedgehogs are also found in that so what we know here is that so basically this survival factors or any of the signaling molecules it can be either survival factors like igf1 insulin growth factor 1 or it can be chemokines hormones neurotransmitters or anything can bind to the gpcr or any growth factor can bind to tgf uh, tumor uh, transforming growth factor receptor so ultimately the binding of cell signaling molecule to the receptor can be done outside of the cell but that triggers the activation of sudden protein inside of the cytosol so for rtk pathway it is pi3 kinase for g protein coupled receptor it is the g protein itself for tyrosine kinase receptor it is the ras protein that we saw earlier okay and for integrin it is the fac so ultimately they are going to relay this signal from that protein to multiple other protein in the downstream you can clearly see for map kinase pathway ras raf make arc like that and arc is also known as map kinase so that's why the pathway is known as map kinase pathway so similarly for all these different pathway ultimately trigger it till nucleus then that particular protein will move inside the nucleus as a transcription factor and can activate so this for example map kinase pathway activates what fos and jun jun and fos are transcription factors so once they are activated they will move on and they cause gene regulation means particular genes to be expressed the product of which will be released to the cytosol as proteins so this is a process right so this is to give you an idea about the signal transduction pathway signal transduction pathway occurs in every single cell signaling pathway every single cell signaling pathway has its own signal transduction pathway signal transduction or signal relay process they not only relay the signal but also amplifies the signal okay for example in map kinase you saw binding of growth factor to the receptor tyrosine kinase receptor then activating ras ras activating raf raf activating make mef make activating map kinase which is also known as arc and map kinase activates fos and jun then finally fos and jun see arc is once activated fos and jun gets activated and they will cause gene regulation that's how simple it is that's how easy it is okay now i'll move to the last slide and basically this last slide is to discuss about important property of a cell signal transduction pathway because for individual type of signaling there is a specific that there are multiple factors can follow same signal transduction pathway for example chemokines hormones transmitters interleukins uh, let's say transmitters like serotonin they all can follow one single signal transduction pathway by gpcr g protein adenylyl cyclase protein kinase crab and gene regulation so be it a serotonin be it interleukins be it a kind of hormone they can utilize gpcr based 
signal transduction pathway. So multiple proteins, multiple signaling molecules may follow a single signal transduction pathway. It's possible. Now I'll move to that slide where I'll show you the important parameters of a signal transduction pathway. We only discussed about two crucial parameters. One is the signal relay and the second one is signal amplification. But beyond that also some important informations are required. So you need to understand some of that as well. So signal transduction pathway states and what are the important component of it? So these are seven important points to consider. But how to remember all these components? Again, I'm there with a mnemonic, I'm there with a trick. Remember I told you in the very first lecture, if you have seen that lecture, that for cell signaling and signal transaction pathway basics, you only need to know one thing. Samir Das, P Das, Firse. If you remember this mnemonic, you'll understand all the pathway and all this process quite easily. So P Das is required to understand different type of, uh, you know, uh, types of cell signaling. While Samir Das will help you to remember the different aspects of signal transduction pathway. So what do you mean by this? Because Samir Das will drill it down. Apart from the small r, all of the alphabets are involved explaining the property of signal transduction pathway. So starting with S, S for specificity. A signal transduction pathway is very specific. Uh, not too specific but it's really specific means a signaling molecule of a specific type should fit to a receptor for example if it's a gpcr re receptor gpcr receptor it will bind to transmitters like serotonin it will bind to interleukins but if it's a rtk it may not bind to any of this while rtk are more dominant or predominant to involve with the growth factors and how the growth factor binds to it they are more familiar to So specificity is very important. A signal transduction pathway always works in a specificity. Although they have some ambiguance, for example, as we mentioned in the GPCR pathway, multiple signaling molecules may have sharing the same pathway. Second is A, A for amplification. Amplification is, as I mentioned, signaling process in the signal transduction pathway reaches the ultimate goal of amplifying the signal means what do you mean by amplification let's say uh, in the process of rtk receptor tyrosine kinase right so ras is produced let's say for simplicity one ras is produced that one ras will activate let's say 10 raf raf 10 raf will activate in an individual raf will activate even five let's say five or ten make Right? So let's say total 100 make will be activated and more make will activate arc, 1000 arc will be activated. So actual message that we carried, that we started with is amplified, not by 10 times here, yeah? just for an example, but it's amplified because one particular protein of the upper hierarchy is activating more to the down hierarchy. That is the approach. Then we go to M. M for what? Modularity. So basically, the modularity is always present in the signaling pathway. In the cell signaling pathway, basically the modularity means specific modification of the proteins and interaction between the proteins. And the interaction between the proteins are fixed. For example, in RTK pathway, this is the pattern that is fixed. In case of uh, the GPCR pathway, the G protein, alpha unit separates from beta gamma, gets activated, then further activate adenyl L cyclase. That is the modularity of the proteins, the structural integrity of the proteins interacting with the other proteins that is fixed. Then I, I for integration. See the cell signaling pathway is integrated. It is integrated in the cell. The integration is properly done. The integration is properly done means what? Basically, the integration of this pathway is always linked with the cell signaling molecule which is outside of the cell and between the transcription factor which is inside the nucleus and the proteins which is produced in response to that signaling. That is the integration. Every single pathway is fit inside this particular picture. So whenever there is a signaling pathway, you always ask a question. What is the signaling molecule? What is the receptor? You know the duo. Then know the transcription factor, terminal protein that they produce. 
then you'll understand the actual function of the signaling pathway and remember one thing whatever signaling pathway that is going on right now currently in our body and we know of all of them either they help the cells to grow and divide or cause the cell to die they'll fall between these two there is nothing else beyond this two particular limit either it will cause the cell to grow and divide or cause the cell to die so integration is properly done then what is needed d d for desensitization what do you mean by desensitization see every single signaling pathway has its result right for example if a growth hormone binds to the rtk receptor tyrosine kinase the result is the growth of the cell so while enough number of cyclins and cdks are produced in the cytosol of the cell we can understand yes now it's time for the cell to grow and divide naturally we don't need cdks and cyclins anymore so cyclin cdks are the last of terminal proteins that is produced upon the growth hormone mediated signal via rtk at this end at this process what we need to understand desensitization why it is important because once enough number of our proteins are produced we no longer need to produce them right because our cell is a very essential system it is a very energy efficient system it should never invest one penny extra if that job is done so enough number of proteins are produced we don't need to produce further growth factors or growth proteins or proteins associated to the growth so what we'll do is that we'll shut down in this case we'll shut it down we'll shut down the production of further growth factor so what you will do desensitization of rtk either we'll cap this rtk or mask this rtk or the ras that we have activated will make them inactive generally the second process is utilized that is the second messenger production is halted or inhibited in that way further downstream processing further downstream amplification of the signal will be blocked that is known as desensitization another very crucial property of signal transduction pathway without desensitization uh, the signal transduction pathway will lose any goal then comes the a a for adaptation signal transduction pathway although they follow a proper integrated method but they can adapt to new situations means a one particular protein for let's say ras although follows this particular pathway but ras can have some sort of impact with other proteins in the surrounding cell may have so they can adapt to the developing uh, requirements of a cell so requirements which are being developed inside of the cell depending upon requirement this proteins that they produce the proteins that the intermediates of a cell signaling pathway or signal transduction pathway is present they are going to interact and adapt to that new requirement based on the requirement they can modify for example the same pathway where just a minute before ago i told you that uh, once enough proteins are produced they will desensitize ras let's say they have utilized cyclins and cdks or let's say uh, artificially we take all the cyclins and cdks out of the cell to check whether the cell will move to the production mode or not you will see that yes after we will remove the cyclins and cdks from the cell at this moment the cell will get back to the further production of cyclins and cdks inside of the cell this is something another important idea that is the adaptation because the desensitization will be off ras is again activated and the process will again continue so very important that it has a desensitization process that means it should have a on and off switch off switch and again on switch then comes the last one s so although it is cross talk but cross talk that's why i said s cross talk cross talk is from s so cross talk means basically all the other components or the intermediates of the signal transduction pathway can contact to the neighboring proteins of different signal transduction pathway and can inter talk between themselves means intermediates of one signaling pathway can talk with the intermediate of the other signaling pathway so let me share uh, the the same image that we shared earlier here again you can see one thing very clearly that the mek that we produce the mek can take three different paths here you see and can ultimately cause the gene regulation uh, otherwise you can clearly see the g protein that is linked the g protein is 
following a cross talk because g protein means is linked with gpcr pathway but still you can see that the g protein has a cross talk between a ras it also has a cross talk between pi3k pathway as well this is a prime example of signal transduction pathway cross talk this is another very important property that's why you see a complicated image like this even there are more complex images that this are present where this cross talk process is described even in more details okay so that is the different properties of signal transduction pathway and uh, we've seen all these processes and how to remember that easy samir das okay specificity amplification modularity integration desensitization adaptation and crosstalk all of them are possible so in very simple words two tips that i shared that the pathway is always a balance between live or living or growth pathways or death pathways growth pathway and death pathway okay and the second thing it always have a on and off switch it always have this on and off switch present in it okay so that concludes our understanding of signal transduction pathway i believe you have a clear understanding of signal transduction pathway if you watch these two lectures cell signaling basics and signal transduction pathway you know how easy it is to remember just remember one thing that is p das samir das fir se you will remember everything you will understand everything and i want you to watch the next lecture regarding the different types of cell signaling pathway one is the gpcr based pathway the second one is the receptor tyrosine kin kinase based pathway and how they are related how they link to the cell growth or cell death and we'll also have another lecture regarding cell death pathway separately known as apoptosis or programmed cell death you we'll also watch that So that's it if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends subscribe to this channel to get more videos like that in future thank you bye